I recently purchased three of these uh, frequency reference boards here and they're based on this silver box here. This is a CTI OSC 582B02 OXCO. It's a ovenized uh, crystal oscillator and what they've done here is they've taken these. These are surplus out of, um, I believe they're from old cell sites and they've mounted them on these boards here with a input connector for power, a low dropout regulator. This is an LM2940CT. This is a low dropout regulator. These run on 5 volts. So they're taking an input voltage here and dropping it down, regulating it to 5. This uh, looks like a 10 turn pot here. This is to adjust your frequency and zero it on 10 megahertz. It has two outputs here. It's got a TTL square wave output and a sine wave output. So this is normally a square wave uh, signal so there must be a looks like here there must be a low pass filter that filters the square wave to get your uh, sine wave out here well constructed um, I got a data sheet here and these are quite impressive this is the data sheet just for the uh, OXCO here and it runs on 5 volts. Here you can see the pin out here. Now this can be tuned and I believe to tune this you vary the frequency on this reference pin and it looks like according to the sheet here plus 1 to minus 2 volts on that pin above the uh, normal voltage here allows you to vary the frequency from plus two parts per million to minus one part per million so you can uh, you can adjust these things what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare it to a GPS frequency standard and then I can can adjust it they have to warm up for a minimum of five minutes that's the turn on time here um, this data sheet is downloadable. Uh, somebody translated it from Chinese into English, which is nice. If you want to look at it here, download it. You can look at um, all the specs on this thing. These are fairly inexpensive. I think I think these were like eight dollars a piece for the boards here, and uh, and they've got the two connectors on here where you can connect. Um, either TTL output or your sine wave output. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to power these up from a bench supply. I've adjusted this uh, output to 7 volts. I'm going to go through an ammeter so I can monitor the current. And I imagine it's going to draw some heavy current to begin with because it's going to have to heat up the, the element here. There's probably some type of a solid state device that controls the heat. Probably a feedback system with a thermistor, you know, it's all done inside of the can here. And then that'll drop the 7 volts down to the 5 for the actual TXCO module here. And then I'm going to connect it up to a scope and we'll look at the output. And then what I want to do is I'm going to let this thing run. My GPS standard has been on for days here, so that's going to be pretty accurate. So I'm going to watch this thing and see how long it takes this thing to stabilize so that will be um, coming up next stand by I'm going to connect power to the device here and monitoring the current it's got a nice blue light comes on we're pulling about a little under 400 milliamps it's going up a little bit about 380, 390. Yeah, it's, I can feel it's starting to get warm already. Here's the output. Now, I'm going to put this on a more accurate frequency counter, but it's, it's showing 9.9996 megahertz. Nice looking sine wave. Okay, we got uh, 
about 1 1.2, 1.25 peak to peak. 431 millivolts RMS. Oh, I'm watching the temperature here. It went up. Went up for a second. Now it's dropping back down slowly. It's went up above 400. Now it's starting to back down. So that must switch that element on and off to uh, control the temperature. Okay, the, the purple channel here, channel 2, is my GPS frequency standard. I'm triggering the scope off of that. And you can see here, uh, there's quite a difference in frequency so far. I haven't tried to adjust this yet. I'm going to let it warm up a little bit. It's been running now for just a couple minutes. And the case, the case feels warm to the touch. Let's see what the temperature is. 82.5 degrees, 83 degrees, and the current's dropped down now to about 250 milliamps, 200 and, yeah, just under 250 milliamps. I'm going to just for fun, even though this hasn't stabilized, I'm going to try turning this pot See if I can see the effects on the obviously this isn't gonna vary very much. Yeah, I notice very little change on the scope. I'm gonna have to connect this to a frequency counter and um see how accurate we are in, in frequency so far. Meanwhile, I'll let this continue to warm up. Well, this thing's been on for about 15 minutes, and I cannot get it to slow down. So um, I'm going to measure. I'm going to measure the uh, reference voltage on this thing. Got a meter here. Two point four six nine volts, and the currents drop down. Uh, a little under two hundred forty milliamps. So I may have to do some uh, adjusting here. The adjustment pot, this is a 10 turn pot, and it won't allow me to to uh, put this right on 10 megahertz, as you can see. It's still off a bit. Let me hook it up to a frequency counter, and we'll see uh, see what we get. Well, according to this frequency counter, it's, it's uh, oscillating a little bit high here. Um, about seven, what, seven cycles high? So, I'm going to try adjusting the, uh, I'm going to try adjusting the, the trim pot and see what happens here. If I can find the, why they're making this stuff harder all the time. Okay, I'm going to adjust this slowly. I'm going to take it to one extreme. Okay, I went clockwise and it dropped the frequency. Well, we're back to six. Oh, yeah, we're at to five cycles, four. Okay, I'm going clockwise and the temperature's dropping. So that's good. Let me go back on the scope and we'll see. Uh, see what we got here okay well I think we uh, we're in the ballpark here I'm gonna go clockwise and now I'm gonna go back to 
Now I'm going to go counterclockwise and we're going in the other direction. So it looks like I can adjust this. I'm going to bring it down as slow as I can. Yeah, I'm going to leave this on for a while. Now if these things were taken out of a piece of equipment, I obviously they're probably aged. So once it reaches stability, He's a little fussy. That's pretty darn close. Once again, the, the top trace, the purple, that's the GPS standard, and the bottom yellow trace is this unit here. So I think this is going to work. I'm going to leave this thing run all night, and then we'll see see what happens. I'm going to go back to the frequency counter. Now this is saying it's two cycles high, two or three. But I just turn this on, and uh, I'm going to go by the the comparison with the GPS standard, so that's still pretty close. Anyway, these are these will come in handy. I got three of them here. I also ordered on AliExpress. I ordered ten of the actual just the. Uh, OXCO without the board so I'm gonna play around with those but these three will be nice I could mount this in a frequency counter or some other device and um, looks pretty good time will tell um, long term how stable these things are they come with a little barrel connector with a short lead too which is kinda nice Whoever laid out these boards did a nice job. These could be mounted in a device here. You got four mounting holes. And once again, here's the spec sheet on this. Like I say, you can download this if you want. I got these on eBay, but I ordered the 10 bare. OXCOs from AliExpress, so they'll come sometime, probably in another three weeks or whatever. So anyway, that's the project for today. I hope you like it, and uh, I recommend these things. They're really nice. Anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.